Hey all, I just saw somebody posting a question about the how the pricing formula works on Hydra Lister. I just want to give you a quick rundown of how it works and this could be found you know, in your dashboard, your batch settings or even your Thunder settings has a much simpler form, um, but batch settings in here in the US is um, obviously where I am. So vendor tax and margin. So what this, what this does is it kind of gives you an idea. Let's say, you know, in the, in the states here, statewide, it varies from 0% tax up over 9 or just about 9% tax. So let's say you wanted to cover your butt, make sure all your taxes are covered no matter what. And I'm going to, and I'm going to base this off, let's say if it's a hundred dollar item. Um, so you're going to, you're going to put the tax in there at 9% and your margin is your percentage over the price you want to list it for. So like I said, you, let's say you have a hundred dollar item and you want to list it at 10% over the cost. Now these will actually do the exact same thing. So if you have vendor tax and margin and it's 10 and nine and you just want to add them together and you want to put 19 here, that's fine because these all, these are just kind of giving you an idea of, let's say nobody charges tax where you are. You don't need to put anything here in the, you know, it's just an idea of laying things out simply so you know vendor tax is covered your margins covered your fixed margins covered your minimum margins covered percentages are all calculated the exact same way so like i said let's go based off a hundred dollar uh, item here and you want a 10 percent coverage you want 10 percent overage that'll cover your vendor tax which will be nine percent maximum and then you want a one percent margin on it just to get your little piece of the pie to test your formula Click that button here, and let's say it is $100. Your price is going to be $110, like it says right there. So with that, like I said, once again, those percentages just cover. It's just a percentage over the cost of the item. And obviously, the cost of the item will be put into whatever that item SKU is and the item, let's say it's the ASIN number from Amazon. Whatever that price is calculated there, it's like I said, let's say if it's a $100 watch, it's going to give you a 10% overage on top of that. So some people like to do 9% here just to cover their butt on any kind of fees and uh, taxes that are on there and they want a 10% margin and that's all they want. Now, what these do here, your minimum margin and fixed margin are very different. So your minimum margin, let's say it's $8. No matter what, you wanna make $8 per transaction, okay? And you're like, well, that doesn't make any sense. The minimum margin is already $8. You're already making $10 here. Great. But let's say your item is, let's get rid of this. Let's say your item, make it simple. Your margin is 10%. Your minimum margin is $8. If you have a $10 item, you're never going to make, you're going to have a $1 profit. So I'm going to move this out. If you have a $10 item, pop that in there. This should be $11. So your calculated price here is $11. Now, you want a minimum margin of eight. Let's say no matter what you sell on eBay and wherever you're posting this, where you want to make $8 minimum. That will go here. So now when your item comes out to be $10, let's say it's a $10, let's say it's a, um, a cell phone case. It's $10 it costs you to buy it. That'll come out to be $18 because the 10% overage that is listed here does not cover it. This does not cover it. So your minimum margin is what's going to be um, your minimum minimum, okay? Now, fixed margin's a little bit different. Fixed margin's going to be, even if your item's $100 and this minimum margin's covered, a fixed margin is always a slight price above the cost. So once again, we'll, put, we'll just put $5 in here. And even though your margin will cover any kind of minimum margin, your fixed margin is going to be an overage on top of that. So if you have a $100 item, this should be $115, right? So you get the $100 plus 10% your overage, which is 10% your overage, and then a $5 fixed margin. So you're always going to have that little bit more of cushion. So the settings are really going to be up to you. And like I said, these are just ways to, to uh, lay things out easy for you. So if you, have, if you know your eBay fee is going to be uh, 9%, you can put it there. Your PayPal fee, which there's a 30 cent transaction on all of them, you put that there. Your PayPal fees, you know they're going to be 2.9. You could put that there. Let's say you want, uh, let's say you want $10 minimum margin, and let's say you want to make 10% to cover you for vendor tax and all that kind of stuff. 
So once again, you're going to test the formula. You have a $100 watch. The price is going to be $125.20 listed onto eBay. So right here, this is just a formula. This is, the, this is what the computer sees and how it calculates the price. This is um, code language. It's not something you really need to worry about. So that's how this all works. Um, this, like I said, it's just all it is is coding, and then what that does is it generates the price for you. So you don't have to think about how much you want to list your hundred dollar item for, how much are fees, how much is this, how much is that. It really simplifies the whole process right here. So if you have any other questions, give me a shout. Let me know. Um, you can always message me here uh, on Facebook as well. Take care, guys.